Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9. We're going to read verses 27 through 31 this evening, Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 31. And once you have found it, let's all stand as we read the word of God this evening. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 31. If you have it, give a good, strong amen. Amen. Scripture says in verse 27, And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou, son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes. Now let me stop right here. Once he touched them, now we're about ready to find out how much faith they had. Yeah. Notice what it says. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. I want to read one other verse to you without you having to turn to it from Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. The scripture says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Here it is. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? I want to talk to you tonight on this topic. Why some do more. Why some do more. Father, Oh, God, I, I truly want you to help us as people. We learned some, we've learned a lot about faith this week. And now, Lord, tonight, I want to just kind of talk to the people about some things that I've seen in my lifetime about this topic of faith. And that it would challenge us tonight to trust you even more. I pray that you'd use me, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. God has allowed me to be around some great men of the faith. I, I, I'm privileged. It's troubling, though, to see what happens to their works after these great men of faith step away. Some step away because of health. And many times they step away because God takes them to heaven. This is what I've noticed, and I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be, talk to you just a little bit, and then we'll preach at you somewhere between now and midnight, just seeing if you're awake out there. I, I've noticed that the great ministries, after the one that God used to build that great ministry, that that great ministry shrank or died after that, after the next person took over. And I believe the reason why is because a person taking over didn't, doesn't have the vision or the faith of that original person. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to mention the names of these places, but I'm going to mention some, just some works and regions that I, that I think of. I think of a work um, down south. Man, God used him to build this church to several thousand did a phenomenal job building that work. Soul winning church, largest church in his day in, 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 the, in the United States and had a, had a thriving Sunday school and thriving bus ministry and had several chapels around, the, around his um, area that he would send people to. But then he stepped down. When he stepped down, the next guy came in, and the next guy really, he realized, I'm not the man. He was only there for about a year. He said, I'm not the, I'm not the guy to run this thing. So then they called somebody else, and that church began to go down and go down and go down. I remember I went there one time. I, was, I, was, I had an off Sunday. I, that's, I just wanted to see this work, and I went there. I looked at the work, and I looked around, and it was a large auditorium with just a, just a little bit of people all just kind of scattered all over, more seats than there were people. I looked around, and I, I wanted to see the thriving work. I wanted to see what God had done there, and I go there, and I see a place that had died, and my heart was saddened because what was great was no longer great. I think of a church in the north 
good man, built the church, thriving work. He, um, God removed him, and, and after God removed him, that ministry began to die, where today, that ministry, it's not that it's a bad ministry, but it's only, it's only a shadow of what it used to be. Not as great as what it used to be in the heyday. You go there and you look at it and you, your heart can be saddened by the fact that it's not what it used to be. I could take to a place in the South where a man built a work, a great work, a thriving work. He, he retired and somebody else took over after him and as that next man took over after him, that work has, 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 has dwindled from day to, from week to week to week where today that work is, is, is barely a shadow of what it used to be. I think of the work, and I can remember seeing that work in its heyday, and I think of myself, oh, how sad, how sad that this great work is still not going today. I could take you to another work down south. I could take you to that work, and I could show you what God did through that man down there, had a, had a large auditorium packed out many times when I go to preach for him. He stepped down because of health. As he stepped down, somebody else took over, and that work just never got back to what it used to be. Just began to slowly dwindle down to where today um, that, uh, that that church is nothing what it used to be, not even close to what it used to be. Now, now I look at that, and my heart is saddened. I can think of another work uh, uh, that that our ministries grew up together. And I watched that work grow, the faith that was involved inside of that work to a thriving ministry that when now that I go back, the ministry is just a shadow of what it used to be. Now, it always breaks my heart when I see these great works to become a shadow of what they used to be. I was thinking about that. I was meditating on that thought right there. Then this statement came to mind. God always blesses a man. Listen to me. God always blesses a man. He blesses, get this now, that man's vision, and he blesses that man's faith. What I, have, what I have learned is the guy that took over from that original guy didn't have the vision and didn't have the faith. And because he didn't have the vision and because he didn't have the faith, that's why the work went down because it was the vision of that man that made that place grow. It was the faith of that man that caused that man to step out and God blessed that faith and the place began to grow tremendously. Do you understand tonight? I'm saying tonight, great works. I'm not saying they're bad today. I'm just saying they're not what they used to be because the guy that took over inherited something, thought he was something because he took over the great work, and that great work becomes a shadow of what it used to be because the next man doesn't have the same vision, doesn't have the same faith, doesn't have the same drive. Oh, my heart breaks inside of me. One day, I don't know, I don't plan on going to heaven anytime soon. But boy, I don't want this place to get that when I step down, this place empties out and there's a few people here and there. I want Maranatha Baptist Church to continue to go forward and continue to reach the souls of mankind. But somebody has had to have the faith and somebody's got to have that vision for this place to continue to go forward. Jesus said to two blind men, He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. I'm reading that. It scares me, Brother Trimble, because God's going to give me here according to my faith. How much am I willing to step out? How much am I willing to trust an almighty God? According to your faith, be it unto you. 
Get this now. That means that whatever my faith is, my faith can never go beyond what God has given me to do, that vision that God has given me to do. And that's why sometimes some of you get a little scared when I just give you a little peek into my vision of what I have for this church. Let me tell you something. I just have a big God. And I just desire that this generation sees the big God that I serve instead of keeping a God in a little box somewhere that well, it can't be done in 2022. Hogwash on that. It it can be done in 2022. We have, we have backed up and backed up and backed up in 2022. We got every excuse in the book where somebody has got to have the faith to say, I believe God can still do it today. It is. Come on. That's right. That's good. The healing of these men was dependent on their faith. The healing was not dependent upon the society of their day being a good society. The healing of these men was not dependent upon the political atmosphere being an agreeable political atmosphere. The healing of them, those men, did not depend on how the churches of their day were doing. The healing of those men were dependent on one thing, according to your faith be it unto you. Get this now. The healing depended on them. So if they had faith, they would see again. But if they would not have seen faith, they would have stayed blind for the rest of the life because God says, when I want to touch you, he says, be it unto you. Oh, let me tell you how we need some people for God to touch people of faith inside of Maranatha Baptist Church that have a big vision that God can do something inside of your life more than what you can imagine. Be it unto you. Why? According to your faith. Amen. 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 You see, the only reason, listen carefully, why some do more than others is because some act on faith that God can do more and others are comfortable in apathy. People often say, preacher, you need to get some rest. Can I help you out? When you have a vision for God to do something, you realize this is not your rest. I realize there's a real place called heaven. Somebody help me out. And I really believe in that real place called heaven. And I get to spend an eternity in a real place called heaven. And I realize this is only 70 or so years on this earth. So I'd rather, I'd rather give everything I have on this earth for God to do something in my life and be it according to my faith to see what God can do instead of just kind of float around and play around and get to heaven and have nothing to follow me after I'm done. I want my works to follow. How are they going to follow? By faith, they're going to follow. Those who do great things for God are not more special to God than anyone else. You see, God wants to use everyone. Listen carefully. God wants to use everyone. Why? Because God loves everyone. Now get this now. So what the Bible says, he says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards them. You know what God's doing? God's looking around. He says, I wonder if there's somebody at Maranatha Baptist Church that has some faith. He says, let me see this front couple rows right here where these young these young whippersnappers are and a couple and a real old one. And uh, I'm sorry, and it's her birthday today. She always teases me, so it's my time to get back at her. But, but understand, God says, I want to see if I can find some young men, some young ladies. I want to see if I can find someone over here that has some faith. God says I'm looking because according to your faith be it unto you. Get this now. If God's going to say that to those blind men then the same God that said it to them can apply it to us. Hey, be it according to your faith tonight. God looks at the choir tonight. He says I wonder if I can find anybody with faith inside the choir. Faith. 
faith. God looks on the platform tonight and says, I wonder if I can find anybody with faith on the platform tonight. You listen to me. There's a God in heaven that looks at that down. He says, oh, I wish I could find somebody with faith because it takes faith for God to show his power in our life. And if we don't have that faith, then God's power is contained and cannot be seen to this generation. Oh, how we need people of faith. Amen. Anybody can see God do great things through their lives if they have the faith. Get this now. Question you got to ask yourself. Do you have a vision of faith that God can do something mighty through you? We live in such a society that we look to everybody else for help. People are always coming to me and asking me for money. Preacher, we need money. Preacher, we need this. Preacher, we need that. Preacher, we need this. Where do you think I get the money? You think I'm a multi-millionaire? I'm a multi-hundredaire. <laughs> Listen to me. I have to pray it down just like you do. I have to have faith just like you do. I got to go to God just like you do. Listen to me, and the God that I serve is not is not setting me aside so I want to listen to the preacher more than I am the, set, the, the lay person. No, God says I'm going to listen to everybody the same, but according to your faith, be it unto you. Listen to me. Don't you dare back up. I'm saying keep going. Amen. I was thinking of somebody in our church that came to me. They'd come across some financial hardships. They, they said, we started tithing, and they said, we, we, we didn't know, we, we, but we've hit this hardship, and they said, we don't want to stop tithing. I said, you don't stop tithing just because you have hardship. Right. They said, How is gonna, how's it going to happen? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm not God, but I know one thing. I know there's a God in heaven that can do it. Get this now. That person, I think it was that day or the next day, called me up and said, Preacher, I've got to tell you what happened. Went to work, and the boss gave me some extra money, just enough to take care of the financial hardship that I'm in. And what is that? That's called faith. God knew what he was doing. It's just he just wants to see if you're willing to live by faith. One of my good friends, he's now in heaven, Brother Jim Clemenson, started the Agape Boys Home. I remember visiting Brother Clemenson for the first time up in, up in I think it's in um, uh, Othello, Washington. He's on an old Air Force base. I mean, it wasn't much of an Air Force base. I don't think it's big. It was just like a little mountaintop. I remember going to those old buildings. He had this vision up there. He says, that's what God's going to do right here. And he was telling me everything. He, well, the state went after him, so he had, to leave the, he had to leave the state of Washington, went to California for a while. That was the worst mistake he made. Went to California. He said, I want to try it here for a little bit as a holding place. and was there just a short time. Then he moved to, to, to Missouri, Stockton, Missouri. I remember I had a meeting. I, I was there right after he moved to Stockton. They, had, they didn't even have the boxes unpacked yet. Remember I got there and, there's three cabins, three cabins, and a bunch, and just in the woods, out in the middle of nowhere. He would brought all these boys to this little place, this place where, the, where these cabins are. He says, Brother Domley, and his, his faith was tremendous. He says, boy, I, I could see God doing something great. I'm looking around. I'm thinking to myself, there's no way anything great is going to come out of this. I thought to myself, he really, stayed, he really bit it off this time. God took those three cabins. I've taken some men there with me. Brother Heidenreich's been there. I think my daughter's been there. That place is amazing. They've got swimming pools. They've got, I think, two gymnasiums. They've got dormitories. They've got a nice school facility. I mean, I'm looking at this. I'm thinking, I wish I could have come to this when I was a boy. Phenomenal facility. Amen. And I can remember, I'd go back, and to the day of his death, he always had a vision to do something more, something bigger. He's, I said, how are you going to do it? He said, I don't know. He says, God's going to take care of it. Yeah. Amen. 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 He'd go in front of those boys. He said, now, boys, we need to get this done, but we need to pray that God supplies the money. Amen. I'm thinking, man, I, I don't know if I have that type of faith. 
But you know what? God always provided it. God always was there. Why? Because God honored his faith. Now, can I tell you tonight, you have to have a vision of faith. If you don't have a vision, there's no faith. Before faith ever comes, there's a vision, and that vision has to say, let it go beyond what I can see to what God has to do, a vision of faith. Yes, that's right. Hold on. Every time you have a vision, and every time there's faith, there's excuses. Always excuses. God will always provide an excuse, or not not God, Satan, he'll always provide an excuse when faith is about ready to turn some things around. Now, you've got to determine tonight. We've been talking about faith promise giving all, all year, all week long. Can I tell you, you're going to have every excuse in the world to say, God, I can't do that. Now, let me tell you something. You can listen to that, that, that excuse and not see God do the great work through your life and just put what you wanted to put down. Or you can say, you know what? God gave me this number. I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm just going to trust God. And somehow by faith, this is going to happen. Now, you can choose the excuse or you can say, of course, According to your faith, be it unto you. Now, if you want God to do more through you, then you got to act on faith. Listen to me. Faith lights a fire inside of every believer. Get this now. Fear extinguishes it. So I have a choice. Act by faith or live in fear. Faith is forward, never backward. Faith will take me to places I've never seen. Faith creates a greater vision than I can imagine. But by faith, I can see what God, I, by, I, okay, I like in the book of Hebrews, those men, the, the great heroes of the faith, they saw a land that they had yet to see. By faith, they saw it. And many of them died, never seeing the promise fulfilled, but they died in faith and then from heaven. They saw the, the faith revealed to them from heaven. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I wish tonight I could get a church tonight that would say, let's be a church of faith. Let's be a church to see what God can do in in our lives. Can I say to you teenagers tonight? Throw your dreams out. All your plans, throw them out. Say, God, if you could do something in my life, I'll give my life to serve you. You've got all the answers, and that's the problem. Some of you young bucks, you got the answer for everything, but you really don't have the answer because it's your answer. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when you're living by faith, you don't know what the answer is. You're just trusting God. Amen. You're saying, God, you better show up. Amen. You, know what, you know what faith is? Faith is jumping off the high dive. Say, God, you better be there. Faith is going out to the middle of the ocean. They throw you overboard. They don't give you life, uh, a life preserver. And they say, make it back to shore. Now, God, you better be my life preserver. That's it. Yeah. Amen. We've got it all measured out. This is my plans. This is what I want to do. Now, now, I'm, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah, that's you. Yeah, right. Now, why don't you throw that out and say, now, God, what do you want me to do? Why don't you get a vision of faith? Listen to me, I'm talking, there's some men tonight that God's been touching your heart, wanting you to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm saying somewhere, you got to have the faith to say, okay, I'm not much, but God, he can do something. Amen. Faith. Faith takes sacrifice and often experiences failure 
But the fruit of faith is the miraculous. I often say, we call, I talk about our church, I talk about the miracle of Maranatha. Others have, around our city have looked down on our church for years. They can have their museum churches. I don't care. But I decided we're going to be a church that shows this old world that if we can have the faith and we just go out and reach the lost for Jesus Christ, God can do something here. Well, but, 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 but what kind of people do you have in? I don't know. People. What do you mean, what kind? Yeah. Well, how many of them come in on the buses? I don't know. I didn't ask them. Did you come in? I guess when we get to heaven, okay, there's a bus crowd in heaven. There's a driving crowd in heaven. Oh, That's good. Amen. There's a rich crowd in heaven. There's a poor crowd. No, sir. Yeah. That my house may be filled. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. Right. Amen. Faith. You can sit there and have your little small vision and critique and criticize everybody. Or you can get a vision of faith and say, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to happen. But God put it on my heart, and I believe this is going to happen. And I'm going to, I'm going to step out. And I know that people are going to say, say that, I, that I'm a risk taker, and I know people are going to say that I can't do it, and I know people keep on saying they're going to say this about me, but I'm not worried about them. I want to plug my ears to the voices of fear and the voices of doubt. Amen. And trust God. I look at this auditorium over here that we're building. I get excited. It's getting close. Getting close. I get excited, and then every once in a while I said, well, that's a lot of people in here. Then it scares me. But if it didn't scare me, it wouldn't be faith. I, I think of our college that we've talked about getting it going. So how are you going to do it? I don't know. God's going to have to make it happen. He's got to give us the dorms. He's got to give us the land. Yeah. He's got to give us the, I don't know. I know one thing. I know God wants us to train people. Yes. Yeah. I know one thing. I know that we have, the, we have a church here that people could come and go anywhere in the world and replicate what we're doing right here. Yeah. We're not, we, our music program is not some type of music program that no other church can't copy. Any church can copy our music program. I mean, when you got a song that wears socks like that, of course you can. Amen. Come on. Hey, according to your faith, be it unto you. Amen. 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 So let me ask you, and I'm done. I'll ask you again and be done again. What would God give you tonight by your faith? Think about it. What is your faith right now? Come on now. Now, I know the preacher's supposed to live by faith, but so are you. And somewhere we better get in our hearts and our minds that, but listen, I want God to do something. I want our church not just to be a Jerusalem church. I want us to be a both church that reaches Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, other most parts of the earth. I want us to send people around our state, around our country, around the world, preaching the gospel. I want that. That's my, that's what my vision is. Amen. Yeah. So how are we going to do it? If I could tell you how we're going to do it other than what we're doing right now, I don't know. That's where God comes in. Amen. Amen. That's where faith is. You can get on the wagon with me and say, let's try this journey of faith. Amen. Let's see where this thing goes. Let's see what God's got planned for us. Because if not, then Maranatha Baptist Church would be like some of the churches I talked about at the beginning of the sermon. Well, there's a great man before, Brother Domley. But that work dwindled and died. 
Because you had no faith. Had no vision. I think I was talking to Brother Goddard. I think it was him. Sadly, there's a lot of churches going in building programs. But they're not going in building programs to enlarge their auditoriums. They're going in building programs to downsize their auditoriums. That's not me. I'm I'm telling you a missionary who's been going all over the country and seeing what's happening in churches. Brother, if we had to downsize... I'd go find a place and I'd say, God, you got, I'd be faster and praying, God, you've got to do something. I don't want to downsize. A nation going to hell and somebody has got to have the faith to increase. You missionaries, when you go overseas, don't you just have an average work? We're not, so we're not going to support you just to go there and play games. We're, we're, support, we're going to support you to go where you are and do something big for God. So the world that in 2022, there can still be some great missionaries like the Apostle Paul that will that, go around the world like a Kevin Wynn, like a Rick Martin, like a Steve Heidenreich that can build great works when people say it can't be done. He said, but I'm no one special. Well, neither are they. But their God is, is phenomenal. faith go ahead and live your life never see the miracle but the fun comes when you step out by faith I said, well we're here now sink or swim twelve disciples in the boat only one stepped out by faith Eleven sat back and criticized. Peter, you've done it again, haven't you? Yeah, but one can talk about walking on the water. And the other, 12, uh, other eleven sit back and said, well, I wish I'd have done that. I should have stepped out with him. It was one young preacher that, that walked on the other side of the Jordan River and followed Elijah until God took him to heaven while the rest stood back and said, well, you shouldn't be following him. What do you think, you little preacher boy? He followed that man of God and then all of a sudden when Elijah went to heaven, he came back to that same old river. He took the man, he took his mantle off and threw it on the ground, took up Elijah's mantle and he said, well, this is how the preacher did it. I guess I'll do it too. And he spent the waters and he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And God spoke, I'm part of those rivers. And those other preacher boys that stood back and said, well, there's something different about him. There's probably somebody publishing something on YouTube. Well, he really thinks he's Elijah. Come on now. According to your faith. According to your faith. Be it unto you. Some of you tonight need to refire your faith. Refire it. Stop living in the land of ease. Some of you just need to get some faith. Some of you need to increase where you are. I believe God can do it. According to your faith, be it unto you. Father, tonight, I think of those works. God, I don't want ever want to be guilty of saying there's a great man in front of me. I'll let his work die. Oh, God, I want the vision, the faith, the belief that you can still do something great today. Help us, God. Help us tonight to have that faith to trust you. Because according to our faith, be it unto us, may we step out by faith. And may we trust you. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.